It was the year 1911. A newspaper editor was asked about what journalism and publicity practices he would encourage aspiring journalists to use most. Use a picture, he said. After all, it is worth a thousand words. Decades later, the saying has evolved into the phrase we all know and love. A picture is worth a thousand words. But now, in this day and age, it is more than just a simple phrase. It is our reality. Two years ago, I saw a picture. I've seen many, but it was one of them. And that picture changed my life. It, to me, it really did speak a thousand words. And in fact, some of those words were plastered on the photo itself. It was an infographic conducted, and it reflected a study conducted in 2007 in the UK on the media representation that Muslims experienced. According to that infographic, 91% of the time, media representation on Muslim people was pretty bad. It was negative, as you can see. And Muslim women, they had the shorter end of the stick. For them, oftentimes when they were represented in the media, the chance that they did get represented in the media, uh, they were often found to be victimized. They had their appearances overanalyzed and their accomplishments, lucky enough, overlooked. And they also were just made to be very uniform, bland, one-dimensional representations without personality whatsoever. Needless to say, at the time when I had seen this photo, it was 2014. So looking at it, I was like, mm, this must be outdated. It's been seven years since the inception of this infographic, and so the world must have become a much better place in seven years' time. Am I right? Why was I wrong? I was so wrong, in fact. Fast forward a month later, the dreadful realization of this photo had come to fruition. But not just for Muslim women, though, for all kinds of minority women. And it was painful to watch, especially since I had such a large, diverse, very accomplished group of friends. Quite the opposite of what was being narrated to me day to day in these various movies, reality TV shows, news headlines, video games, you name it, I saw it. Day in and day out, I was constantly being told that all women of faith were the same, that we were greatly uneducated and in dire need of liberation, that all black women were unintelligent and ill-mannered, that Latino women were these voluptuous sex objects, only good for a prolonged stare, that South Asian women were silent, they had no backbone, no voice. The list went on and on. But what was a college sophomore to do? I mean, I definitely wasn't going to stay quiet about it. That was the complete opposite of who I am as a person. In fact, I, I wanted the solution that I would propose to be as bold as my, as my, as my personality, as, as, my, as my loudness. Because oftentimes, my loudness exceeds my voice and often translates to my thoughts, my actions, my ideas. And so the solution that I would propose would hopefully be just as bold, just as unapologetically loud. But the question still remained. How was I going to do it? What was this bold solution going to look like? How was I going to reverse decades of inaccurate narratives, narratives that were clearly unhealthy for our world's consumption? A world that on average consumes nine hours of media a day, a world with shortened attention spans, a world with dropping literacy and reading rates. As you can see, I was not given much to work with. But then it hit me. My three-word, 17-character answer. Seeing is believing. You see, if I were to come up to you and tell you that Muslim women were cool, and they're not oppressed at all, they do cool things all the time. In fact, 
great things for the world. But all you saw day to day was this, it would be particularly difficult for you to believe me. Nearly impossible, in fact. But what if I showed you this? Young Malala Yousafzai, standing before her audience, head up, broad shoulders, very powerful, giving her Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech for her work in attaining educational rights for impoverished children all over the world. Pretty amazing, especially at her age. You see, these two photos, narrate two distinctly different stories about the same woman. One is just in circulation more often than the other, sadly enough. But if we really take a look at the bigger picture here, pun intended, you can see that what has just happened in this room is a phenomenon that we take for granted. A phenomenon, dare I say, we now have the power to create the power of digital storytelling. Because in less than five seconds, you, the audience, were able to analyze these two photos. In less than five seconds, I was able to not only elicit an emotion out of you, I was able to relay an extremely important message that is now ingrained in your mind. Isn't that amazing? How photos can make such a big difference in such little time, for better or worse. You see, I've come to the conclusion that the stereotypes and stigmas that exist and are acted upon in this world only are so because of the abundance of content, digital stories, if you will, that exist to support them, that we're exposed to day to day. And the content creators for far too long have been these big conglomerates these old white men sitting back in their chairs telling your story to you based on what sells at the time, what is most opportune and beneficial to them. Because they know. They know that stories are extremely powerful. We've been telling them since the beginning of time. They have the power to inspire, teach, entertain, and incite change. These companies know and have mastered the art of digital storytelling because they too understand that much of the human brain is dedicated to visual processing and storage. So when we use static and moving pictures to relay a story to connect audiences together, ladies and gentlemen, we are tapping into something uniquely human. Something with the power to both break and change the world. But what does this mean for us? It means that with the advent of smartphones, social media, the internet, and different publishing platforms like YouTube, there has been a significant change in the power dynamic. The reimagination of the storytelling landscape the democratization of the act itself. Storytelling is no longer this, or just this. It's this. This is me telling my friend that I failed my music theory exam. <laughs> this is my friend in Afghanistan telling me about her time with refugees via Snapchat. Is on her story, yes. These are my friends at BuzzFeed telling me what Asian people aren't like. These are my friends at The Huffington Post, now this, AJ+, keeping me updated on news of people all over the world, people I would have never met otherwise, headlines I would have never seen otherwise. But here's the best part of this story. The dynamic isn't the only thing that's changed. Because as you can see, storytelling has greatly evolved. Gone are the days where stories need to have thick covers and be pages long to make a great impact. They can be 140 characters. The best part, though, of this story 
is that storytellers no longer need a stage. In fact, they don't even really need to create their own stories. Storytellers have the power and are capable of just passing on the narratives that they have heard and seen to others. And last time I checked, we do this every second of every day. When we retweet something, repost something on Instagram, share something on Facebook, LinkedIn even, we are disseminating a story to our followers, our audience. Gone are the days where we're just characters in an inaccurate, convenient story told by someone who looks nothing like us. Someone who hasn't walked a single step in our shoes. Now, in this reality, I can tell you that storytellers look a little like this. Like you. The people in this audience. The people beyond it. Whether you like it or not, the reality is you are a digital storyteller. And with that role in mind, whether you've accepted it or not, you have this great responsibility, this duty, a privilege really, that not a lot of people have in different parts of the world to hone the skill, to hone your ability to tell stories digitally. Because think about it. If we hone our skill to tell stories digitally, the possibilities are endless indeed. We can now live in a world that is not only better for us, but we can infiltrate the current narrative and rewrite it in a way that positively impacts the world for our future children, the generations come after us when we're no longer here. They, as well as us, can live in a world with less hate crimes, a world in which people embrace their differences hold hands, collaborate, and create something great together. This picture still hangs on my bedroom wall because it not only reminds me of why I do what I do, but it reminds me of the power that the media has to do good, to incite change. After all, it was my seeing this photo that pushed me to do something. It pushed me to start an initiative that uses the power of digital storytelling to highlight the positive narratives that surround the amazing minority women that surround us every single day. An initiative that I like to call the Ojabi Project. I'd like to close with a proposition, something that I want to do with you. Together, Let's write a new chapter. Let's rewrite the narrative. Let's actively scrutinize and question the things that we see on our feeds and only share the things with our audiences that deserve to be shared. Let us create content that speaks volumes about who we are as inhabitants of this earth, because I'm sure you've heard it a million and one times today, but here's the million and second time. You are more than a statistic you are one of the great stories that the world holds. And digital storytelling is more than a fad. It is not going to die out in a couple of years. It is a skill that you will be expected to have. A skill that if we, the digital storytellers of today and tomorrow, we use appropriately, we can either lead our world to witness an unexpected plot twist or a very happy ending.